And we've been told and taught that curiosity is the knowledge emotion, you know, because if you're going to feel, you know, and feel, you know, what you're trying to learn, then you're going to have to be curious. This is Advertising in Africa with Dele Udugbemi on Africa Business Radio. Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Advertising in Africa with me, Dele Odwemi. Today I have with me a friend and a business partner, Boju Akimbade, who, as you will find, is a very interesting character. I'm not talking about the comedy side just yet, just still, you know, on the advertising front. Today we're going to share a topic that has been bugging my mind for a while, which is something around the paradox of what creativity is. And why I find Moju to be the right person to share that, you know, kind of thought with is his background, uh, being someone who's come out of like what isn't like conventionally linked to advertising and then applied his mind then to, you know, advertising, you know, uh, and therefore, in my view, he's one of those very few people I've met in the course of my journey that has a different outlook to what advertising is. But I then, in reflecting on the topic when I thought about it, that it's actually also suitable because that perspective is actually the topic itself. That is, what is creativity? What mm. is it when you draw yeah. or the concept behind the drawing? Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that word really is creative. So, Bonjo, welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Do I call you Dele or Bob D? Dele is fine. No, yeah. the Bob D part is very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. The, as I've introduced the topic, I would like that you take it firstly, though, from your background, and okay. I like that you share just for those who don't know you. Right. And then now uh, we can then put what you would then share about it in the right perspective. Okay. All right. So, yeah, Bob D, like you know, I am an outsider in the industry. So I found myself in a few situations that led to this journey. So at the beginning, I studied architecture. Um, I'd never considered myself creative, never. But I do trace my, uh, when I think back and when I do these sessions, I have to reflect. And I think of the first time I ever did anything that I would consider creative. I was in year five in primary school and I was meant to do a piece of art and I did not know what to do. So I just took, it was, um, I did a mask and I split the mask in half. And one side was bright orange and the other side was black. And I got the IS score. That was all. Okay. I just painted this mask black and orange. End of. And from that day on, I'm like, oh, so it's this easy. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> so, you know, in primary school and those that went to, you know, schools like I did, the way you sort of entertain yourself was to draw creative characters, whether it was um, a Marvel character, a DC character, and then all the cool kids could really draw. And then they had these mini books where they'd drawn so many characters and they could flip it and they could animate. And you're always like, ah, oh, when am I ever, ever, ever going to you know, learn to draw? So anyway, fast forward, um, I, I was going to be, I wanted to become an engineer. My dad said, no. He said, you're going to be a lawyer. You should talk for a living. I said, no. <laughs> and the middle ground was he forced me into applying for architecture. So I, I got accepted and I got there and they were like, all right, so everyone here must have done fine art in secondary school. Oh boy. No, I did not. <laughs> um, there's a course in Nigeria called technical drawing. I said everyone must have done that. No, I did not. And so I literally had to learn everything in year one. You know, I had to sit with a, a lot of people learning how do you draw? How do you communicate visually? It was difficult and I flunked every single <laughs> course that had to do with drawing. <laughs> Uh, but I ended up somehow, you know, graduating as an architect mm. and I, you know, did not enjoy working as an architect. Mm. I was thrown to, you know, work on the fields and uh, inspect buildings or supervise construction. That was tough again. And I found my way to, I was working in a company um, at the time. Uh, it's a radio company, Cool FM, and they had an architectural firm. And there was a guy there that sat on the last row. And he used a software called Coral Draw. And I'll never forget. And he was creating these amazing posters. Mm. I was like, oh, you saw the architecture, you know. I said, yeah, all my friends do it, you know, but I don't know how to do it. He said, oh, okay, yo, it's easier. And he just, you know, showed me. I was like, oh, no. I said, I, but I don't have Coral Draw on my computer in the office. He said, but you have PowerPoint. I'm like, yes, I do. He said, oh, you can do it in PowerPoint. And so I started designing in PowerPoint. And I designed in PowerPoint all the way to, you know, I got, you know, I started working in comms and I became 
this PowerPoint person. <laughs> and that's how we started. Mm. Posters and what have you. Mm. This led to um, the company um, that I run now, which um, is part of um, a larger group of companies. And we found our way into advertising again accidentally. <laughs> you know, when, so when you start with visual communication, somebody's mm. going to come and say, you know, help me do a press ad. All right, press ad. Yeah, and you have to write the copy of the press ad. Mm-hmm. And so um, my wife fortunately said, you guys are really good. I think you should, you know, come into the advertising industry. And I was like, nah, no. <laughs> you know, and that's imposter syndrome. And she mm. said, I've seen the things you do. If you come in, you're going to take everybody's lunch. So we had this um, this brief from a beverage brand. I don't know that I'm allowed to mention the beverage brand. Sure. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So Gulda came and... Uh, they had this position, positioning about manliness and being, you know, this real man. And, uh, my wife was working on the campaign at the time in her digital agency and they were like, look, they need this creative idea, a big idea. I didn't even know what a big idea was or a long <laughs> idea. I had no idea what any idea was. <laughs> but I was lucky enough to, I'm a fan of observing culture mm-hmm. and I was in, um, Sapele at the time with a group of um, young graduates, you know, training them. And I noticed every time we called somebody up to receive end of course certificate, mm. the person would say, ah, no man you be, no man you be. I'm like, ah, okay. This might work for this, <laughs> ad, this, 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 this ad. So I started testing it, testing it. And I got back and I said, ah, book it. I kind of had this idea. And I said, it. she's like, oh, it's genius. And so, um, it became our first big pan Nigerian ad and it became a reference for, pretty much any outdoor campaign so far so anytime you know i see counter reports or you know what have you they always reference the ad as the way to contextualize um culture mm. in communication and in creativity mm. and so that's how you know i ended on this journey and yeah it's been advertising yeah, it's interesting to know that uh, before this episode i was actually reviewing a document talking about how well to use outdoor okay. and that was the example Basically, because it's few words, yes. but very imposing. Uh, so it was a large font, yes. the man you be, and did that it worked. It was a post-mortem report of how, how that worked. And, you know, taking us back to what we're, we're talking about, therefore, that creativity is therefore not about this school. Yes. Because there is that thinking that there is the artist yes. that is creative. Yes. And it is the business that is creative. Correct. It's a creative business, which means that I, for example, started on the media side. And what we were required to do was to try and find within placements how you could stand out. Mm. So you could deliberately choose to be the first ad on NT News Network because you wanted a certain kind of impact. Okay. Or you could decide to be the last time. So within there was all of this. those elements, there are things to move on. That started developing my mind about what creativity means. That yeah. Aren't we talking the business rather than the product? The product itself, the, yes. the, Because the tendency is to think the product. Of course, the art is creative. It's so much effort has gone into that. You've got copywriters, you've got... You know, our directors, yeah. you've got... You it's know, all of those people that put <laughs> so much into it. Yeah. So that... When you then now take a few steps backwards and realize, okay, if the business is what creative. is creative, the question is, what other things can that be linked to? Okay. I.e., is at the moment linked to advertising. Yeah. That's the, you you know, a brief, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of shaking in the room, <laughs> and then that becomes a product. But that there is a broader possible use of that skill set. Yes. If people start thinking of what they do yeah. differently. Correct. And say that it's not, creativity is not about the end product. Yeah. It's about putting a lot into what you're doing that then lets that end product become creative. Yeah. So, and, and back to the point I made earlier, that you, in that journey, because you didn't start from that framework, you started with a, Almost like with a mindset. And that's why I thought you're such a very good person to talk to about. Let's demystify this creative thing. Let it be about putting stuff out there that, oh, I can be yeah. creative even though I'm not an artist. No, and you're absolutely right. I think so. I have moved, you know, from, cause there's this general question that is everyone creative? Mm. That's where I am now. Mm. I think every single person is. Mm. What the seed for creativity is curiosity. Mm. And we've been told and taught that curiosity is the knowledge emotion, you know, because you're going to feel, you know, 
and feel, you know, what you're trying to learn, then you're going to have to be curious. And so if I try to contrast it to when we started trying to look at the different fields when it came to even design, we found that, you know, they, you have those that think logically mm. and they're designers and then you have those that think, <laughs> for lack of a better word, Wild. <laughs> wildly <laughs> and they're designers. And so if you think about um, a fine artist and a graphic artist, mm -hmm. right, the fine artist would usually produce art for art's sake. And then the graphic artist tends to be a bit more rigid. Purpose. In, yes, purpose. And so in every field, you know, and when we're trying to recruit, you know, you go into engineering, mm -hmm. right? And you find that you need this creativity in engineering, mm -hmm. whether it's in designing cars, laptops, you know, what have you, you know, you have those that have to help think creatively. There was a, a great story I heard about when um, the iWatch was being designed and they had all these engineers there. And they brought in fashion designer, they brought in a linguistic expert, and they brought in all these different people because at the end of the day, when looking at the product, mm. the infusion from these different fields is what contributes to the final product. If you leave engineers to design a car, there's nobody that's going to ever <laughs> use that car, you know? So, and it's the reason why, you know, in the work you do, whether you are even in financial accounting, for mm. example, mm -hmm. It's important. I don't think you should be creative with numbers to the extent. Ah, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say. But, you know, I, you know, again, it's a very left brain practice. But within that practice, you then see, even if it's not in the final output, mm -hmm. but just in the understanding and trying to communicate that understanding of, you know, the work they're doing, then comes the creativity. And that's why you can attend, let's say, an ACCA course, mm -hmm. you know, that's been taught by an accountant. And two different accountants, they teach the same but in different ways and mm -hmm. you're able to um, learn that in different ways. So yeah, I see now that, you know, creativity is a gene and I think everybody's got that gene and you just have to constantly sort of walk in the tension of that, you know, to say, am I pushing this thing too far or am I playing it too safe? Now, because we're in the multicultural world, obviously, the question is also asked sometimes about can creativity be applied across multiple cultures? In which case, what is appropriate hmm. or fitting or representative of one culture? Is that possible to cut across? That like, there have been so yeah. many attempts to develop what they will call global campaigns. Global campaigns. And, <laughs> you know, the pushback is always this thing about fit, hmm. about, you know, the nuances and why one works in one location and, and, so yeah. what role therefore does like your your local context yes. play in your ability to be creative that if, if yeah. a person culturally is for example us africans were were taught oral tradition yes. whereas there are other cultures that are more in terms of how they transfer information is more written it could be yeah. abstract but it's written yeah. so obviously what is oral and what's abstract despite being written it is completely different so we give the context so is it possible that something can work across that people can be deliberate to recognize okay a bit of abstract a bit <laughs> of oral <laughs> and then just combo no is that possible uh, um, so i think there are two things here mm. the first thing is what's true mm -hmm. and we've discovered that there are universal truths mm -hmm. so for example a mother will love her child Yes. It's a universal truth. Yeah. So if I'm trying to speak to a mother, I can tap into that insight. Mm -hmm. It's true. However, where the dissonance comes in, it's in communication. Mm -hmm. It's the language. So the language is where it always, always differs. And that's what we found that the insight may be universal, mm -hmm. but the communication never is. If I break that down, the visual cues. Oh, even the verbal cues. Will be, could be generic, but that's, Tone, language, all of that will register differently. It would always I, register differently. Is that, is that, yeah, uh, that's correct. So if you think about hand gestures, for example, mm -hmm. you know, so we both, I mean, I'm walking uh, down, you know, maybe the Champs Elysees in Paris, mm -hmm. I see Delhi, mm -hmm. I feel, you know, I want to say hello to, you know, to Delhi. Mm -hmm. That feeling is mm -hmm. a universal mm -hmm. feeling. But if I, you know, stick five fingers at Delhi, mm -hmm. Delhi might say, oh my goodness, this guy is, you know, insulting me. Mm -hmm. And that's where it always differs. It's always in the final, it's in the way it's communicated, the way it translates to you. Mm. So when I see um, a global campaign, like the ads at the Super Bowl, there's always something universally emotive about them. 
but it doesn't u- usually translate without the context. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if I don't have the context, I really don't know what a hot dog, you know, in New York <laughs> means. Like, I don't get why you're excited. What, what does that mean? <laughs> so, um, and I, th- and I think, you know, that's the, that's the lesson. Uh, we are still waiting for the universal language. I think, um, even with um, social media and digital today, mm-hmm. we found that things begin to translate a little more. So if you're on TikTok, mm-hmm. you know, for example, where, I mean, and I think I'm too old to be on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I find... We'll, we'll let your kids decide. Yes, I mean, <laughs> I find that, you know, I see, you know, young people, you know, bridging that communications gap. Mm-hmm. So they're singing African songs and they can be from Asia, mm-hmm. they're dancing to it mm-hmm. and they're all communicating. Mm-hmm. Similar things happen, you know, in the world of esports. So you're, you know, playing Fortnite. Mm-hmm. You'd find that children of different languages and barriers are able to translate one message. So Fortnite is that platform that then brings all these different things together and then they do what's called the emote. Mm-hmm. So that emote means the same thing so if two people that play Fortnite are walking on the streets they can emote to each other jobs done mm-hmm. and I, I think we're getting to that point where we're going to have these platforms that would foster this integration and then you can truly genuinely have a universal campaign okay. the reason I was asking is yes fine the campaigns but what also the campaigns translate into is some sort of reward okay. which is cans no. you know, lorries and, and that tends to be how Advertising or creativity want to measure. is celebrated. <laughs> so, if they cannot be as that yet, anyway, it would yeah. seem like the struggle is in language or whatever the struggle is. But there is a struggle, obviously, yes. that doesn't let one fit all. Yeah. Right. So, which means what is creative, maybe in the Western world, is something that maybe we'll question here, and therefore the same thing, you know, vice versa. Therefore, should we be seeking validation elsewhere hmm. as Africans? Should we, instead of desiring of an African to win a kind of award, you know, when those who would judge it more than likely do not have, have the, the context, context yeah. of where it's from, should we be seeking that level of validation? Or is validation actually best at the level to which it has context? In which case, a Yoruba movie should be <laughs> seek to win an Oscar. <laughs> uh, 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 it perhaps should be maybe aiming for the Africa Magic Award Awards. instead, or even if you've produced, uh, like Etel produced some Yoruba ads at some point that then had like subtitling and, and all that because the, I, I felt what they were trying to communicate was deeper yes. in, in the language yes. and they allowed. Yes. For that to, to happen So at what level Should creativity be rewarded I suppose I, I think And I'm not a fan of awards mm. um, And it's because Usually the awarding body Is always biased mm. So if I think about it In the world of sports You know I don't expect A great footballer Like Ronaldo To win the Super Bowl mm. That's never going to happen Right mm-hmm. So why do we then Expect the same thing When it comes to You know The space in which we're in Yeah I think if we do have what's more like a governing body that's universal mm. and then have universal rules, mm-hmm. then it's easy to say, oh, I'm going to have the World Cup and every single country is going to participate mm-hmm. in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And then that way I can measure because everyone is, seeks validation. I think mm-hmm. that's why, you mm-hmm. know, as human beings, yeah. so if the largest platform is in Fiji, you know, then we want to go to Fiji. And even if we've never been to Fiji, but mm-hmm. if that's where it is, that's where we want to go. We want to cut our teeth with mm-hmm. the best um, and amongst the best. But I think the industry has to recognize what you said mm-hmm. and it has to change to play by some sort of linear level playing field. We have to be able to construct something that works for everyone. So what we want to measure is that thing that can be measured and that really truly matters, you know. But you're right. I don't see <laughs> what's the Nigerian movie. I think Wedding Crashers. <laughs> wedding planners. Wedding planners. Is it Wedding Planners? Are you sure? Is that Wedding Crashers? Uh, I haven't seen Wedding Crashers. It's Wedding Party. Yeah. <laughs> wedding Party. What did I say? Wedding Planner. You say Wedding Planner. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wedding Party. You're right. The question I asked actually stemming from a conversation I had with a. A gentleman that was a global creative director at the time. Okay. We invited him for an Africa conference. And he sat with us one week, Monday to Friday. And on Friday, we asked him to judge all the creatives that people were presenting. And he told us he was very disappointed. Oh, wow. Um, and that struck us, you know. We were very shocked. It is a Danish guy who lives in New York. 
who was revered, still is, and yet he was saying to all those creative heads across Africa that he was disappointed. So we were thinking, well, he couldn't know our context anyway, but he said something interesting about his disappointment. It wasn't about the creativity, which okay. was what we thought it was. It was the originality. Oh. He said to himself as he was evaluating each one, this ad could have played in New York and I wouldn't even have known it was African. Oh. Uh, that when we, we don't even score our ad with our own oh, songs. No, also, you music, know, we wanted, yeah. so they would just take us, so it's a, uh, uh, lovers, you know, it's for close up and all that. I just go with European. Yeah. So it's like, what's African about that? The, the fact that they're two black people, they could have been anywhere in the world. And that there are dimensions that we can begin to take a look at that can let us own it more. Okay. The IE unpack everything, model that, okay. So his point, lest I forget, is that it's not the model that makes it African. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think maybe we, in trying to adapt global ads, we got the models to be black and then yippee yeah. you know we're african now you know that that kind of thing and there was none that had in all those that were presented had an african score but in having said that one of the guys remember there was an ad they had that she had one and played it and they showed us that that didn't it move you actually the fact that the song was authentic african and and all of that, you know, sometimes you hear things and you think some of you can dispense, but that was something that okay. never left me. That okay. we need to consciously start getting into a mindset of, you know, what is creative is also in part kind of like us digging in into where we are, okay. digging up things that are original to us and that we start looking at audiences beyond us. Because we would think, here's what I always say about or hear about an ad locally, we'll be like, I resonate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the people get uh, the yeah. people, yeah, the, the, the people get it and it resonate. So maybe it's some narration or whatever, whatever it is. But realistically, should we have that ambition about maybe what we're putting together can be rewarded elsewhere? Yeah. It would be that originality that would strike. I don't know if you've seen Squid Game. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are the chances of that uh, thing? Let's say they ran on NTA <laughs> <laughs> happening, <laughs> but it was on Netflix, right? Yeah. It was already on the global platform. Yeah. So you gave it a context, uh, yes, uh, in a foreign language that was subtitled. Yeah. You gave it its own context, and look at that. I said, okay, maybe okay, there's something. Here. Here. You yeah. give it its chance because I guess you're not. A it fan. was original <laughs> to that location, yeah. rather than them trying to. So, so that's why I didn't want to lose that thought that. It would seem that rather than think of the creative person as the artist, mm -hmm. rather than think of what's creative to be a local adaptation of what's foreign, yeah. that it would seem it's actually more about the authenticity, and the originality, indigenous. the cross-functional thinking, you know, all of that, all of that, that produces product that then is so unique mm. that whether it's Squid Game or it's yeah. Wedding Blana, it comes party, organically. It gets a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm of a different mindset, Pleasure. and it, the challenge is because I see everything in shades of grey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm sort of like, you know, what is creativity? What is art? Mm. You know, you have contemporary art, you have um, modern art, you have, you know, these things that you can't really put a finger on. Somebody squeezes a piece of paper, mm. puts it in a museum, and they say, "Hey." That's art, right? <laughs> um, you know, TITI, -I, a famous, you know, <laughs> so she can say, you know, I've got my two kids here. I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to put it up for $1 million. Mm -hmm. That is art. Mm -hmm. And so in the same vein, when I look at, you know, the work we do, mm -hmm. I've, you know, it's sometimes the audience decides, you know, and they decide with their wallet, they decide with their, you know, their fan love, they, they decide. So I'm not a fan of the Airtel ads, for example. Mm. I just think they're polarizing, you know. Um, I'm sitting there, you know, in my dashiki I'm from the north, and there's this person speaking the language, and I'm like, oh, okay, what's he saying? I have no clue. <laughs> but then beside me, there's somebody that loves it so much because it resonates. Mm. You know, it polarizes me, and mm. I don't like polarizing ads. On the other hand, it's very authentic. It's very original. 
and it worked. It had deep resonance. Okay. So then you look at the 080 Niger for Life ad, mm. which sort of took a complete non-player in mm-hmm. the industry mm-hmm. and became a main player. It's a fun thing. Uh, yeah, and it was a pure. It's a a foreign ad that mm-hmm. they tried to localize. Everything about it was foreign. The mm-hmm. music was foreign. <laughs> the graphics were foreign. They were it was street culture, but it was not our street culture. Mm. But it really then began this wave, and you had all these young people, whether they were even with other telco companies using that ringtone of a different uh, mobile company mm-hmm. as they are so, yeah. and in that sense you then go and it's time to reward them is it the one that sort of made business sense and then created this new audience or is it the one that uh, it tried to really and resonate and co- deeply, polarized, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and so that's where I am I'm always like you know what mm-hmm. you know and this is the beauty of creativity yeah. where sometimes you just blur the lines you know and you have you know each person speaking their own truth and then, yeah, you know, you you applaud it. So, in your view, what is, you know, the post-pandemic creative world going to be like? Oh, it's definitely a virtual world, a digital world, a fortnight world. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what it is. Collaboration across multiple markets, mm-hmm. you know, and in different languages. It's. I think it's actually a really, really good thing. I think so. Is Africa there, you know, given... We have infrastructural challenges and so on. Well, I think we're there. I, I'm not sure how deep the infrastructural challenges are limiting now. Mm. I think access has been improved due to, you know, devices being more powerful. I mean, the devices we have now, you know, are more powerful than the ones that sent uh, Sputnik to <laughs> the moon. I think where the challenge is, you know, is in the, the rigor and the discipline. I think that's always been our challenge, you know. Mm. There's this sense that everything has to be, you know, microwave. You push a button and it's done. And so when you meet someone, you say, all right, you know, tell me about your idea. Mm-hmm. And they don't bring a notepad. Like you couldn't be bothered to even write it down. No, nah, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Gen Z. I'm a, I, I've got everything in my head. <laughs> so when you then get to creative, you're like, all right, you know, can you not sketch, you know, what you're trying to say? Even if it's the layout of a floor plan or even if it's a media plan, just Scribble it down, you know, and they're like, no. So that rigor is what's taught, you know, because you learn things first principles Mm -hmm. and it's taught in developed markets. But Mm -hmm. here you wake up, you pick up a mobile phone and you're an influencer, you're an artist, you know, you can't play an instrument, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where Africa struggles. Famous famous for being famous. Famous, yes. (laughs) Yes. Okay, that's interesting. It's a dynamic that is already here. So it's not something that we're still trying to check out what the impact would be. My fear, I suppose, is we seem to have stumbled onto it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you do, then you don't tend to maximize the ecosystem. You don't tend to convert what could turn out to be uh, what the commercial opportunities truly truly are and on that note i'd like to thank you so much Bobby, for thank you very sharing, much Bobby. sharing your knowledge and skill set with us on this topic it's something that we can't possibly have done justice to over the the 30 minutes or so of this talk so it's a, a talk i'm hoping to continue to share at, at another time because as you pointed out it, it's so alive it's that was created for the ghouls is yeah. that created for the Ghana <laughs> and therefore is a topic that rumbles on but I mean your perspective of it has been quite interesting again as I thought it would be because it's come from the An frame <laughs> of, of, of that outsider but that's really what I love about it that we take a second look at what creativity means we take it beyond the artwork and the product and start examining the process and in doing that hopefully we can uncover a lot more so again thanks for thank for you your thank time you so if uh, you want to follow more about me you could find me on linkedin uh my handle is uh delio and uh, Bonju, uh where can they find you uh, you can find me on linkedin as well it's bonjour and okay. on twitter and on instagram it's everywhere <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much all right thank you all right, all right.